In order to be a better cyclist, you have to develop the ability to climb hills well. And climbing hills well is a function of your power to weight ratio. So the less you weigh, the more power you produce, the stronger hill climber you'll be. And it's said that to win a hilly stage of the Tour de France, you have to be able to produce 6.7 watts per kilogram of body weight over the last 30 minutes. And that's a lot of power, and there's only a few human beings on this earth who are able to do that. But regardless, even as a recreational or a competitive cyclist, you're still gonna be able to improve your hill climbing abilities. Beyond power to weight ratio and one's physical strength, gear selection when climbing is also very important. And the more experienced you are as a cyclist, the better you get at choosing the right gears. Uh, really accomplished cyclists will be shifting gears all the time in order to dial in the right cadence. And as an example, most really good climbers will be climbing a, a grade from four to six percent, probably at a cadence around 70 to 80 RPMs. But of course, there are different riding styles. Some athletes will be pedaling at an even higher cadence, uh, 90 RPMs or higher, whereas some others will be climbing at a lower cadence, say 60 RPMs or a little bit higher. But it, so it really depends on your riding style. But in general, the idea is that you have to get good at selecting the right gear inch in order to match your climbing style and get into a good rhythm. How you approach a hill is really important. When you're on a rolling hilly course, one of the techniques you use is to utilize your momentum to help carry you up the hill as far as you can. So you attack the bottom of the hill and as you start climbing the hill, you continue to work hard, utilizing that momentum to propel yourself up the hill as far as you can. Then once you find yourself starting to bog down and your cadence starts to drop, you either stand up or shift to an easier gear and stay seated and continue to manage your energy appropriately up the hill. Now, as you start getting towards the top, you work hard to punch it over the top and then you get back into your rhythm, get back in your seat, get back in your rhythm, and start going down hard on the other side. Body position when climbing is very important. And one technique a lot of experienced cyclists use is they scoot their, themselves back on their saddle a little bit to be able to utilize those strong muscles in the hamstrings and the glutes. In addition, they keep their upper bodies really nice and quiet, or very still, as well as keeping their hands relaxed so they're not wasting any energy. They're only using their legs to help propel themselves up the hill. Another thing you'll find with extended climbs is a, an experienced cyclist will shift their body position frequently to utilize very, very slight minor changes in their body position and therefore utilizing different muscle groups. And that's really important so that you don't fatigue a certain muscle group. So for climbs that might last over five minutes, you're going to want to shift a little bit on your saddle back and forth, as well as change hand position. Go from the top of the bars to the hoods. The way you manage your energy when climbing a hill, especially a longer hill, is very important. So when you are at the bottom of the hill or starting the climb, you want to get into your rhythm right away. Uh, one mistake a lot of people make is they attack the bottom of a long climb too hard, which puts them in oxygen debt very early on, and it's hard to get out of that debt. So the key is, instead of attacking the bottom of the hill, is start the hill at a controlled pace and get into a rhythm. Now most climbs you'll find yourself hovering around your lactate threshold. That's a given, especially if you're in a race situation. So obviously you need to be fit in order to do that, but don't get yourself very anaerobic at the very start of a climb or you'll find yourself, yourself drifting back in the pack and uh, that's counterproductive. So as you start the climb, you get into your rhythm, you're going through your gear selection changes to get into that nice cadence, what I call a sweet spot, and then you're changing your hands, hand position. Then as you start to reach the top of the climb, say in the last 20% of the climb, that's when you want to start picking it up. That's when a lot of athletes start backing it off. But in order to be competitive, you want to start picking it up so that when you are about to crest the hill, you're really pushing it hard and using your momentum to go over the top and then you're pushing yourself down the other side. Then you can start recovering a little bit, but don't make the mistake of losing that momentum. So that last 20% or so of the climb, push yourself harder, to gain more momentum, and punch yourself over the top of the hill. Pedaling technique is also a critical component to becoming a better climber. When you're climbing a hill, 
you don't necessarily want to be pedaling with a toe down technique as some beginner and even some intermediate cyclists will do. Uh, again, it's somewhat related to your riding style, but a lot of really good climbers will pedal with an ankling style of riding, meaning that when they're pushing down, they'll extend with their foot. And then you've all probably heard of the analogy of pulling back as if you're wiping mud off the bottom of your, of your shoe and then pulling up through the top of your shoe with your heel down. And that's really important because that way you're utilizing more of the overall pedal stroke. You're able to produce more power throughout the entire pedal stroke and you're pedaling more efficiently that way. Once you start losing your momentum when you're seated, which by the way is a more efficient way to climb, and you, you, the grade pitches up, for example, and you need to gain more momentum, then you can stand up. And when you stand up, you're going to pop up out of your saddle and you're going to gently rock the bike back and forth using your momentum and not so much muscle strength to propel the bike up the hill. Okay? And then once you gain that momentum, then you can sit back down in the saddle and resume your seated climbing. Standing up requires a lot more energy, so once you feel your muscles really starting to fill up with that lactic acid, really starting to burn, that's when you need to sit back down and get back into that nice fluid, seated cadence and pedaling style. As with anything, it takes a while to become better and to improve, and uh, repetition is definitely the mother of success when it comes to becoming a better climber. So you need to go out there, do hill repeats, do hill climbing specific work on your trainer, uh, anything that you can do in order to improve your pedaling style and improve your power output, that's going to make you a better climber. And one day you'll be climbing as if you have helium in your tires.